Welcome into NBA Now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Appreciate all of you for making today's show a part of your day. Today's NBA Now episode presented by Aura All in One Digital Safety. Nowadays, so many people get hacked with their credit cards because everything lives online. By signing up with Aura, free 14 day trial, you can avoid all of those headaches. That link is available in the comment section. It's aura.com slash chat sports. NBA draft latest. We'll start off with the latest NBA draft rumors and we'll get to ESPN's latest mock draft. So the NBA draft set for Thursday, June 23rd from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. ESPN projected all 58 picks following the NBA draft combine. You're watching right now and you're like, hold on, there's 30 teams in the NBA, there should be 60 picks, but because of tampering with the Chicago Bulls and Miami Heat, there are only 58 selections because their draft choices got taken away. Teams in the top 10, according to reports, entertaining offers to trade out of their respective selections. So there could be a lot of big movement, sizable movement within the NBA draft lottery, which would certainly make things fascinating in those first 14 picks. We'll be giving you live NBA draft coverage right here on Chat Sports. That's another reason why you got to subscribe. Before we take a look at the full first round mock draft from ESPN, we're not going to venture to the second round yet, but in a couple weeks, we will certainly do that as we're about three weeks away from the NBA draft. If you're excited for draft time, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. ESPN's latest mock. Take a look at all these picks and I'll offer some of my own analysis and what ESPN draft expert Jonathan Gavoni has to say about some of these prospects. There's been a lot of movement as compared to ESPN's last mock and it's pretty fascinating in my opinion. Jabari Smith still going number one to the Orlando Magic. Chet Holmgren going number two to the Oklahoma City Thunder as they do a great job of player development. I think that's a great place for Chet Holmgren. I personally would go with Paolo Bencaro, but Bencaro in this mock going to the Houston Rockets, which gives gives that young roster, led by Jalen Green, another intriguing young piece. Jaden Ivey climbs up the draft board, going to the Sacramento Kings at number four, and because of that, my dream scenario of teaming up Cade Cunningham with Jaden Ivey, whose jump from his freshman year to his sophomore year was monumental, doesn't come true any longer. Instead, it's Keegan Murray, the do-it-all forward and center, who reminds me a little bit of Al Horford from a basketball intangible standpoint, going to the Pistons at at number five. As for the latest on Jabari Smith, this coming in from Jonathan Gavoni, most NBA teams are operating under the assumption that Smith will end up hearing his name called here at number one as he fits both the front office and coaching staff's philosophy for what they look for in a prospect. He is also an outstanding fit for a Magic team that badly struggled to space the floor effectively last year. Smith was arguably the most dynamic shooter in college, converting on 42% of his three-pointers last year, despite Sanders six foot ten and with my analysis that's why Jabari Smith is my number one player in this draft class he's 6'10 uber athletic great length and because of that length he can get a shot off from anywhere on the floor and already I think his three-point shot is going to translate to the NBA level people also rave about his work ethic this is a guy who loves getting into the lab and growing his offensive arsenal I also think he has a lot of defensive upside because of that length and athleticism for the Pistons I alluded to this just moments ago the Pistons should be bummed if they're not able to get Jay and Ivy I think the on-court pairing of Cade Cunningham as well as Jay and Ivy would lend itself to a lot of success. I love Ivy's mentality. I like his athleticism. He's not quite as bouncy as John Morant, but last year with Purdue, he was great. 17 points per game. He's a pretty good rebounder for a guard. Assists, I'd like to see those numbers grow a little bit, but playing off ball with Cade, he'd get a lot of open offensive looks. Three-point percentage at nearly 36% last year. If he can get to 38-39 with volume, Ivy will be in the league for a really long time because already his athleticism is going to allow him to be an impact player right from the jump. I want to hear from you in the comments section right now because I know we have so many NBA diehard fans watching the show. Who is your favorite prospect? in the 2022 NBA draft class. Me, it's Jabari Smith. If you agree with me, let me know. If you disagree, let me know in the comment section. Pick six through 10. Sizable and seismic movement here. Dyson Daniels going six to the Indiana Pacers out of the G League Ignite. His shooting splits awful, but the upside is certainly there. One of my favorite prospects in this class is Shaden Sharp. 
He goes to the Portland Trailblazers at number seven to give Damian Lillard another scoring threat in addition to Anthony Simons, who had a breakout year last year. Benedict Matherin at eight to the New Orleans Pelicans as he rises up this draft board. Jalen Duran, the center out of Memphis, who's a great rim protector, Baseline to baseline runner going to the Spurs. They certainly need a big man, so I like the fit there. And arguably the best offensive scorer at the college level last year, Johnny Davis, who's already appearing on commercials, getting that bag, going to the Washington Wizards at 10. I like that because the Wizards, if they keep on to Bradley Beal, they want to win right away, and I think Davis allows them to try and do that. When I scout Shaden Sharp, he has the ability, he has the potential, he has the upside to be the number one overall player in the 2022 NBA draft class. He already was the number one overall recruit in the class of 2021 after he reclassified. He was an early enrollee at Kentucky, but he never played. He had a massive jump going from his junior season to his senior season. He was unranked as a prospect in his junior year. Then in the summer, going into his final year in high school, he grew from 6'4 to 6'6", and he vaulted up boards. Above the rim athlete who can certainly sky, and he can get a bucket from anywhere on the floor. Offensively, shades of Jalen Green as well as Bradley Beal, in my opinion. His EYBL stats on the Nike circuit were really impressive. 22 points per game, nearly six rebounds. His assist numbers, not all that great, but he kind of reminds me with his offensive output of a guy like Cameron Thomas because he is solely just a bucket getter and he connected on about 36% of his three-point shots. He could be the best player in the 2022 NBA draft. And because of that, he's one of the more polarizing prospects in this draft class. He could go top five, he could also slip a little bit because he's also one of the great unknowns because there's no college tape on him and he hasn't played any professional basketball either. A lot of people would say that Shaden Sharp is getting slept on with this mock or in general going into the NBA draft. Which prospect are people sleeping on the most though? I'm fielding your responses once more in the comment section down below. Shaden Sharp can be in that category. So too can a guy like EJ Liddell. Okay, we take a look at picks 11 through 15. We'll start to run through these a little bit more quickly. A.J. Griffin has a game that's reminiscent, in my opinion, of Jimmy Butler. If he goes to the New York Knicks, I like the fit on that team. He just needs to stay healthy. Missed two years of high school basketball with knee and ankle issues. Usman Jiang of the New Zealand Breakers going to OKC at number 12. He needs to go to a place that has a stable organization because he's so, so raw. Mark Williams, another dookie going to the Hornets. Maybe they make a play for Deion Andre Ayton or Rudy Gobert. If they don't, maybe they select their future center at number 13. Malachi Branham out of Ohio State going to the Cavaliers at number 14. What a young group that Cleveland is starting to build, led by the first-time All-Star and Darius Garland. And Ochai Abaji going to uh, number 15 here to the Charlotte Hornets. As for Diang, playing with the New Zealand Breakers, his numbers, a little bit of a concern. Nine points per game three rebounds. Here's where it starts to get really, really dicey for him as a prospect because he has length that will remind you a lot of a Brandon Ingram. Unfortunately for him, he is one of the least efficient offensive players in this draft class, but the size and the upside is certainly tantalizing. Less than 40% from the floor, playing in a really good league down there in Australia, 27% from three. I don't think the shot is broken. I think the mechanics are pretty solid, but there's no question he needs to get a little bit better as a shooter. As for Abaji, him going back to school and returning for a senior season paid big dividends for him. Obviously, Kansas, excuse me, if I said Kentucky, they were able to win the championship last year, which was a really impressive NCAA tournament run. But with Kansas in 2020, 2021, in his junior season, as he's a little bit older, a lot of people are freaking out about that. I'm not at all, because I think this guy is a plug-and-play player rotationally from day one. 14 points per game as a junior. He shot about 42% from the floor, less than 38% from three, and only 60 8.9% from the free throw line. He comes back for a senior year after he could have gone to the NBA draft and maybe could have been a second round pick 
and he improves his status dramatically, and I think he should be a lottery selection because of the improvements that he made. Look at the jumps here, at points per game, as well as the shooting splits. Nearly 19 points per game last year, 47.5% from the floor, 41% from downtown, and the free throw percentage went up to 74%. That's what happens when you work hard, when you work diligently on your craft, and you put a lot of work in in the gym, and because of that, it's going to pay off for Abaji, I think he's going to be a lottery pick, and if he isn't a lottery pick, he will be one of the biggest sleepers in this 2022 NBA draft class. Here at Chat Sports, we are approaching the grand total of 300,000 subscribers. If you are a loyal subscriber, type Hooper in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed, you ain't alive. YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. That'll take you to the promised land or even easier for you. Just hit that red subscribe button. Videos every single day covering all of the latest happenings in the NFL. NFL, NBA, as well as college football. Join the party. Join the family. Let's get the 300,000 subscribers as soon as possible. Shout out to today's presenting sponsor, Aura, for making this NBA mock draft possible as we pass along all of the latest NBA draft rumors as well. A free 14-day trial if you go to Aura.com slash chat sports. Nowadays, we do more online than ever. Aura does everything and more to keep you and your family safe. What's cool is that if you sign up for this 14-day trial, you can cover up to five family members. Keep your identity secure with extensive monitoring of your personal info. And if your credit card or debit card gets hacked, Aura will let you know. You'll get that notification so that you can shut your credit card or your debit card off. Also, they do a great job of limiting and protecting you from your from you getting your identity stolen. Millions of people per year, they have that happen to them and it is a headache and it can be a very arduous process. Avoid all of that by going to aura.com slash chat sports, a free 14 day trial if you sign up using our link. Pick 16 through 20 here. Jeremy Sohan out of Baylor going to the Atlanta Hawks. I think him too is gonna be able to be a guy who can play from day one. Ty Ty Washington, a floor general type of point guard going to the Houston Rockets. Coming in off the bench, I certainly like the fit there. Tari Eason out of LSU going to the Bulls at number 18. And Nikola Jovic out of Mega going to the Minnesota Timberwolves at number 19. International talent, who is the number one international player in this draft class, who is really fascinating for a couple of reasons. We'll do a deep dive on him in just a couple of moments. And then one of the biggest risers so far following the NBA Draft Combine is Jalen Williams out of the basketball powerhouse of Santa Clara. ESPN's draft expert Jonathan Gavoni on him. He's been one of the big winners of the pre-draft process so far, starting with his outstanding measurements, 6'6", 209 with a 7'2 wingspan, and continuing with his strong play at the NBA Combine scrimmages and at his pro day where he excelled in three-on-three -three action. Williams brings a type of defensive versatility, perimeter shooting, and off-court intangibles the franchise typically values and looks like a good fit alongside any of the Spurs' existing players. As for Jovic, excellent size at 6'10". He's really long and athletic, and because of that, what he lacks in burst, he can get a shot off because he is so long and tall. Really good feel for the game. Classic international type of player in that regard. Solid shooting stroke. It's pretty clean. The release is really high, and he can hit contested shots. So obviously, he lacks a little bit of burst off the dribble, putting the ball on the deck. Again, he can make up for that by hitting some contested shots. Here at Chat Sports, I also know that people are tuned in from all across the globe. I want to know exactly where you're tuned in from. A lot of people are watching from America. A lot of people are also tuned in internationally as well. Give a shout out to your country or your, where you're watching from in the comment section right now. 21 through 25, Kennedy Chandler out of Tennessee going to the Denver Nuggets at 21. Jaden Hardy slipping a little bit, going to the Memphis Grizzlies out of the G League Ignite at 22. EJ Liddell, one of my favorite prospects in this draft class, going to Brooklyn. I love the selection for the reasons that I'm about to explain. Walker Kessler, he's tall, good shot blocker. Lacks a little bit of athleticism because of that, dropping down some draft boards at number 24 to Milwaukee, but a great fit there because I think he can play immediately as well. And then Caleb Houston out of Michigan going to the Spurs at 25. The same things that I said about Abaji, 
The same can be said for EJ Liddell. Returning paid off for him in a massive, massive way. Two years ago in 29 games played, 16 points per game, less than seven boards, a block per game, which is impressive because he's not the tallest guy in the world. He connected on about 47% of his shots, 34% from the three-point line. Last year, though, points per game going up to 19, rebounds up to nearly eight, blocks per game in a really good league in the Big Ten at two and a half. He's not going to give you that at the NBA level because he lacks some size. Will remind some people of a skinnier Grant Williams, 49% from the floor and almost 37% from beyond the arc. Him going back to school is a big reason why he is starting to drive, uh, climb excuse me, draft boards. And if he goes to a team like the Brooklyn Nets, he is a rookie who will be cheap, affordable, and could be an impact player. Last selections to get to. Trevor Keels, the point guard for Duke to the Dallas Mavericks. They need a backup point guard. Can they get it in the form of Trevor Keels? I do like that pick. Dalen Terry out of Arizona, him and Benedict Matherin, a really good on-court combo, really good athletes going to Miami, the player development factory that the Heat are. Christian Brown out of Kansas going to the Golden State Warriors, that pick the same with this mock draft. He can really play defense and hit some corner threes. Marion Beauchamp out of the G League, Ignite going to the Grizzlies at 29. And rounding out the draft is another guy who's dropping a little bit in Blake Wesley out of Notre Dame, the youngster of the Fighting Irish going to OKC. That would be excellent value to round out the first round with the final selection in the first round. Now, we did not get to some of the second round picks. In a couple weeks, we will do a two-round mock draft. But for all of the NBA gurus out there, who is the best second round prospect who can actually be an impact guy? Is it a player? I don't know, like Kai Soto or somebody else. Let me know right now in the comment section.